What's up everybody and welcome to another Patreon pick. This is actually February's pick that I'm just now getting to and then here in a week or so we will get to March's pick which is being voted on right now. If you want to join in on the fun and help with these Patreon picks or access any of the other exclusive privileges and content that I have over on my Patreon page, please check the link down below and join in the fun. Well, February's pick was my top 10 worst movie sequels made my list and then realized that all of the top 10 that I had were all horror movies. So technically this is the top 10 worst horror sequels. Uh, this is a list that um, shouldn't surprise too many people in a lot of ways. It's just the bottom of a lot of rankings that I've done, but there's a couple in here that I've never talked about before that when I started thinking about worst horror sequels, one that just really just oh, infuriate me at their existence. Yeah, there was some in here I was like, oh yeah, totally forgot that that existed. There is movies that exist that are worse than the movies on this list. I understand that. I do not watch a lot of the gutter trash movies that are out there. Yes, there is going to be movies that you have probably seen that are worse than this. These are just the movies that I dislike the most. So if you want to consider it my most hated movies, that's fine. Consider it that. Also, continue on watching later on because before I get to the end of this video, I'm going to give you some information on the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. I've talked about them a couple of times, but if you've never heard my spiel before, be sure to check that out because I have an exclusive discount for you and information on why you should check out Skillshare. Coming in at number 10 is something that might surprise people only for the reason that it's number 10 and not higher on this list. And number 10 for me, is gonna be Alien 3. Now, I acknowledge that a lot of people really enjoy this movie. I acknowledge that people have their issues with it, but definitely don't consider it the worst of the franchise. This is a movie that because I love Aliens so much, I despise this Alien film the most. I will watch Alien vs. Predator Requiem. I will watch Alien Resurrection a dozen times before I ever revisit Alien 3. The reason why it's number 10 is because as far as quality of filmmaking, this is definitely the best made film on this list. Alien 3, where its problems come, is that the first few minutes of this film completely negate everything that we gained and everything that we were victorious on with the ending of Aliens. And to me, that's just something that I will never be able to forgive this movie for. And it's something that as soon as I put it in, it immediately puts me in a bad mood and I just cannot get into it. If you can't accept that, sorry. I understand that there is some merit to what is going on. I understand that it has a pretty good tone throughout. There is some quality filmmaking. It's David Fincher, for God's sakes. And tonally, I can understand somebody seeing the ending of this movie being like this full circle kind of bittersweet story for Ripley, but I just can't get into it. So regardless of all the things that it might do right after those first five minutes, the opening of this movie just kills it for me every single time. Number nine is gonna be the Final Destination or Final Destination 4. This is the only Final Destination film that I do not own. And this is the only Final Destination film that I have only watched once, and that was in theaters. You can still have some dumb fun with it, just going to watch the kills. That's the reason why it's a little higher on this list. But this is by far, by a landslide, the worst of the Final Destination movies. It was so bad that when I saw this, I immediately walked into Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, and that movie looked like the fucking Godfather in comparison to this. Uh, and, and I still, you know, I, I have my defenses of Rob Zombie's Halloween too, but I, I walked out of the Final Destination and went, wow, that franchise is done. Luckily, they had Final Destination 5 come out, which a lot of people would say is among the best, if not the best of the franchise, and we are eventually getting a new one, maybe this year, maybe next year, but this one, terrible characters, terrible CGI, the kills aren't even all that creative, the, the acting, every, everything about this that you can say is bad for most slasher films, is bad here it just no no thank you number eight halloween five the revenge of michael myers this is my least favorite halloween film a lot of people i think the popular answer is halloween resurrection or one of the rob zombie films but this one to me is just the most worthless of all of them you have the the added bonus of the fact that it just destroys everything that four built which at the time when i first started watching this film i didn't even really grasp because i wasn't that big of a fan of four 
as time has gone on and as I've reviewed these films and rewatched this franchise, I actually really like number four and it frustrates me that you go from four to five and they were just so worried about striking while the iron was hot financially that they forgot to actually put effort into the story. You get the man in the black stuff, the Colt Thorn storyline starting off here. You basically negate the ending of Halloween 4, which is a really interesting place to end on and would have taken this into a new direction for a change, which they hate to do that in the Halloween franchise. You gotta go back to Michael, you gotta go back to Lori. You get this whole thing with Tina, where she is the replacement co-lead character because they kill off Rachel in the opening like 20 minutes, which is just a slap in the face to that character and to fans of four and tina is a god awful replacement not very good kills one of the worst if not the worst portrayal of michael myers not really a big fan of what tony moran did and i really don't really like the mask either i mean this is in the running for worst masks and there's quite a few it's just a movie i get almost no enjoyment out of you even get the cop thing the fucking cops walk up and it's clown music dun, 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 dun. This movie sucks. Number seven, this was a first time watch last year for 31 on 31, and that's Jaws the Revenge. This is a movie that everybody played up how bad that it was to a point where I figured that it couldn't have been anywhere near as bad as they thought. And I actually expected that I would watch it and it would be higher on my ranking than most people's because it was a first time watch and my, my expectations could not have been any lower. No, no, it's pretty garbage, especially when you compare it to the greatness of the original Jaws. And all the sequels are really not worth that much, but Jaws the Revenge just goes the extra mile of not only being a bad movie and a stupid movie, but just insulting your intelligence along the way. Like, you have a shark that has the cognitive ability to seek revenge and to desire revenge and just, you know, floats down the ocean to follow this family because it just knows that they're going to be down there on vacation. And the mom's having, like, the shining going on where she's like, every time something happens, she just looks around like, oh, oh there's a disturbance in the force. Uh, this movie's terrible. I, I hated it when I watched it. It's definitely a movie I'll never revisit. If I can help it, I'll never watch any of the Jaws sequels again because the first one is the only one that I enjoy. This is just a really, really bad movie. Number six, Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason Takes a Boat. This is a film that uh, is still my least favorite Friday the 13th film. And just like Halloween, there's a lot of different popular answers. Some people say Jason X. Some people say Jason Goes to Hell. Some people say Part 5. Some people who are insane say the remake. But Jason Takes Manhattan is a movie where, especially if you're binging the franchise or if you're doing a marathon, by the time you get here, you're just exhausted. You're like, oh my god, the, the, the template of this franchise is just starting to wear on you by this point. And even just as a standalone film, it's not a good slasher movie. You get Jason who's resurrected and then he spends most of the runtime on this boat with a bunch of characters that you don't care about. With Aside from maybe like an electric guitar kill that kind of stands out for the era, there's not really anything memorable about the kills. You have this promise of Jason walking around in Manhattan. You get that like in the last 20 minutes. And you get the boxing kill, which is the one thing that I, as well as a lot of people, really only like this movie for is that one kill. You get these things where he's turning back into a kid because of this toxic sludge. And even the way that Jason looks, he's like juicy the whole movie. I always call him Juicy Jason. This is just a terrible movie. It's a terrible slasher film and it's a terrible Friday the 13th film. And how anybody in their right mind could lift this above at least four of the Friday the 13th sequels that I get shit for liking, <sighs> I'll never understand it. Number five is Jeepers Creepers. Three. Now, hopefully the legacy of this franchise will be on the right track with this new reboot that's coming. And I did a video on that news announcement if you want to check that out. Jeepers Creepers 3 is a movie that, as a fan of this character and of this movie franchise, I understand about Victor Salva. As a fan of the franchise, it was a sequel that I was waiting for for a very long time. I love the original Jeepers Creepers. Uh, I, I love that movie. Jeepers Creepers 2, I have fun with. It, it's definitely a nosedive in quality, but I still have fun with it. And for the longest time, there was all these news articles and all these announcements out there about the ideas for Jeepers Creepers 3, bringing Trish back and bringing the father from 2 back, and we're going to have this huge face-off with the Creeper, and we're going to find out his origins, and how do we kill it? And I'm like, hell yes, that's what you should do. And then this movie comes, and this movie is basically a gigantic, horrible commercial for that movie, which 
is never going to come because I don't even think they're going to do that with this reboot. They're going to start fresh, do something different. But it's a stepping stone movie, which already I hate. If you're going to tell a story, tell the story. Don't meander around and give us this bullshit movie just to kind of bide your time until you get to that one. That's not good storytelling. As far as this movie itself, absolutely terrible. The effects are terrible. The way that they amp up the truck to where the truck is like this unstoppable killing machine is ridiculous and it kind of kills some of the intrigue from the first movie. You have a lot of ridiculous scenes where the creeper's like running and you know chasing somebody down in slow motion. You know, CP did a lot of great visual gags with this on 31 on 31. The whole premonition storyline about this woman finding the severed creeper hand and then she has like the shining that can tell what his origins are and the whole movie we're like well what, what are his origins and it doesn't even tell you it is a terrible movie it's a terrible sequel and aside from all of the controversy that would kill this franchise if it was still in his hands this movie killed everybody even the fans interest in whatever victor salva had to say from this movie forward regarding the jeepers creepers franchise so Hopefully, in new hands, we get a new sequel that's actually worthy of the name Jeepers Creepers, the first one. As far as I'm concerned, that's a pretty good name. A lot of people I understand don't. But Jeepers Creepers 3 is garbage. Number four, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Now, there is quite a few ripe movies in this franchise. This has never been and probably never will be one of my favorite franchises, but... For somebody that loves the remake and can appreciate the hell out of the original and gets a lot of goofy fun out of the second one and can even like movies like the beginning and there's some movies in this franchise that I really enjoy. A Next Generation is a movie that I will never watch again. I've reviewed it. I've ranked the franchise. That is my way of just kissing that bitch goodnight and saying, OK, I'm never going to watch you or deal with you again. It is baffling how anybody could have went through the production of this and continued to shoot scenes and write things on the page for a script and edit this thing and think that they had anything close to a decent film. The only shining spot in this entire film is that you get to see Matthew McConaughey go full batshit crazy, and that kind of has its own novelty to it, but they're really low-brow movies for the most part, these Texas Chainsaw films, especially the sequels. Then they really play up the whole like transvestite side of Leatherface, which I, they touched on for like a moment in the first movie with like this female mask, but they like play it up like crazy here. And it's just, it's just odd. It doesn't have anything. And I'm not saying anything about that community. Don't twist this. But for this character, it just, it kind of takes away some of the fear of that character. And it just kind of makes it this weird joke where it, you know, she's wearing makeup and he's like crying like this in the desert. And it's like, what are you doing? Leatherface is your guy. Why are you, why are you doing this? And all around, this movie just has everything that you do not want in a Texas Chainsaw movie packaged together and gift wrapped to you covered in shit. Number three, when I'm talking about sequels that I kind of forget exist until I start racking my brain about what sequels really infuriate me that they exist. Yeah, this one came up. The Lost Boys, The Tribe. Wow. For somebody that The Lost Boys is my second favorite horror film of all time, and on some days that you ask me, it might even be my number one horror film of all time. I love The Lost Boys. This sequel is an abomination. The third movie, The Thirst, is not a whole lot better, but there's a couple of cool scenes in that, so it narrowly escaped this list. But The Tribe, from start to finish, from conception to execution is abysmal. The fact that they even had the audacity to call this a Lost Boys movie just makes me want to strangle whoever the hell was involved with the production. The story, like, it just takes beat for beat the Lost Boys and does it in the cheapest, shittiest, non-given-a-fuck way that they possibly can. And you watch this movie and you're like, why would you ever make a sequel to one of the greatest, if not the greatest vampire movie ever made and just put this little effort into it. You even have some of the returning characters. Corey Feldman is in this movie as Edgar Frog. You know, I think there's mention of other characters in the second one. I don't remember if anyone else is in it. But whoever else in the original cast, I don't care if your career is in the shitter or not, that walked into this movie, saw what was on the page, saw the production value in front of you when they said action, and you did not just say, nope, we're cutting this thing off right now, I want nothing to do with it. 
shame on you. You get Kiefer Sutherland's cousin or nephew or something in here as the main vampire and he could not act his way out of a paper box. Oh my God. Uh, eventually I'm gonna have to review these movies too. Oh my God. But before I get to my top two guys, let me take a moment to thank our sponsors, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can go and find a lot of different people that not only have the desire to learn and to better themselves and to find new skills and trades and hobbies, but you find this community that really backs up your passions. If you have something that you wanna check out, you wanna learn, be it gardening or filmmaking or artistry or cooking, there is classes and communities with that niche that you can go and find and you can better yourself. In a time like today, where a lot of us are stuck at home much more than we were used to, what better time than to take that extra time at home and better yourself and learn some new things and try some new things and try to sharpen your skills on something that maybe you tried once and didn't quite dive into or enough or didn't have enough of a, a support system there. This has a built-in support system with people just like you that have the same drive, the same interest, that you can not only make friends, but get some accountability and learn together. I myself have been looking into low budget filmmaking and photography to not only sharpen my skills for what I do every day on this channel, but maybe one day give me enough knowledge and enough skills to where I can do something beyond that, like a short film or a fan film, who knows what the future can hold. And for everybody that clicks my exclusive link down in the video description below, you're gonna get a free trial membership to Skillshare Premium, which typically is just below $10 a month. So do yourself a favor, click that link, check out Skillshare, and better yourself. So thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now on to the top two worst horror sequels of all time. And you know what they are. Number two should surprise absolutely nobody and that's gonna be Seed of Chucky. I am a Child's Play fanatic. It is probably my favorite horror franchise, if not my second favorite. Again, depends on what day you ask me. And this movie is one of the most abysmal sequels that I have ever seen. And I hate the fact that it exists and is a gigantic stain on this franchise. No disrespect to you if you find some enjoyment in this film, all the power to you, I wish I could find it. But for the five, six times that I have watched it, I just don't find anything. There's one small scene where Chucky is looking through some dirty magazines trying to pick his Magazine of choice that uh, kind of gets a chuckle out of me once in a while. Everything else in this movie just makes me want to put my head through a wall. From the concept of this real world story where Tiffany exists in the same universe as the actress Jennifer Tilly and there's this meta-ness going on now in a franchise that never had meta-ness. And then you have this whole voodoo pregnancy storyline where they're trying to inject Chucky babies into Jennifer Tilly and she grows pregnant overnight. And then you even have the seed of Chucky, him slash herself with Glenn slash Glenda. I understand this character is kind of like a, an unsung hero for the transgender community. And again, I'm not spitting on that whatsoever, but everything regarding the execution of this character was just baffling to me. Pissing on himself all throughout the movie, like this recurring joke that nobody laughed at the first time swapping back and forth personalities from male to female, just were one psycho and one's really gentle. I just didn't quite know what they were going for there. Then they split them permanently at the end and we've never gotten any explanation from that, which is probably a good thing. This movie is just terrible. A couple of decent kills, I can give it that. There is gore here, but for Don Mancini's first directorial effort, this is when he totally took control of the franchise, I think this movie is an embarrassment. And I'm glad he fixed everything in Curse of Chucky, and I have my opinions about Cult of Chucky, but Seed of Chucky to me is one of my least favorite films of all time. I hate it. But speaking of hate, even Seed of Chucky does not come anywhere near the boiling hatred that I have for my number one, and that is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Quick little PSA, if you think that it's clever or funny or unique to send me a message or to send me a super chat or to email me or to drop a comment asking, is blank movie worse than Freddy's Dead? Or which is worse, this or Freddy's Dead? Or is Freddy's Dead any better? Guys, I get this question thousands of times and it's always the same answer. Freddy's Dead is my least favorite film of all time. Is it the worst film ever made? No, I, I'm sure there's piles of movies that are worse than this. 
but this is the one that I despise the most. I am a Freddy fanatic, and just like Child's Play, Freddy's probably my favorite horror villain of all time, and definitely top one or two favorite horror franchises of all time in A Nightmare on Elm Street. I love, I live and breathe Chucky and Freddy. Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, despite having a little bit of a lead up with the direction they took four and five leading into this, it wasn't like this huge, you know, brick in the face. This is an abysmal sequel that just does everything that I never want to see this franchise do. And I hope to God we never see it done again. Freddy is literally a Looney Tunes cartoon. This is not Freddy. This is a Looney Tunes cartoon. He starts off giving Wizard of Oz lines. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little soul, too. <laughs> and, you know, there, there's like even Looney Tunes segments where he's dropping a guy out of a plane and he's like moving this little spike bed and he's like acting tired and he's driving a bus. Ah, ha, 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 ha. And he's got this maniacal cartoonish laugh the whole movie. Ah, ha, ha, ha. The whole storyline about this, well, I don't even remember. As many times as I've seen this movie, I don't remember what the hell her role is. She's like a teacher for these kids or something. Her being Freddy's daughter, and then they have to go to the dream world and bring him out so that she can kill him. Hello, we've seen that done in a lot of these movies. I never killed him before. Why does it kill him now? The whole thing about the dream demons being these little 3D skeleton fish. Oh, the more I talk about this movie, the more I just want to break the camera. The power glove kill. What? Those of you that enjoy this movie, again, more power to you, but I don't understand it. I just, I describe this movie and my blood starts to boil. So, I don't know. I've talked about this movie ad nauseum. I've reviewed it. I destroyed it. Uh, it's at the bottom of every single ranking that it ever has a place in. Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare is the movie that I hate the most, and it is my number one worst horror sequel. So what do you guys think? What are your least favorite or worst horror movie sequels? Put them down below. Is there any movie on this list that you genuinely love and you don't understand my or anybody else's hatred for it? You can go ahead and defend it down below. Please don't ask me about Freddy's Dead. It, it, that's set in my mind forever. Nobody's changing it. Thank you guys for watching. Like and share this video. Be sure to check out Skillshare down below and get that free offer. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep watching top tens and rankings and even all the reviews that I've done. Go check out that Freddy's Dead review. I, I get a lot more colorful with my thoughts in that one. Thank you for watching as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.